Today's guest is Phil Lichton. Phil is the CEO of Building Materials Nationwide, which is a UK-based company that supplies building materials to companies with a few to maybe 10-ish builders and tradespeople. Um, their superpower is their buying team, which takes the hassle and stress out of ordering building materials by accessing more products at great prices than any other merchant and streamlining the delivery to the site when needed so their jobs get done much sooner. Um, so let's say hi to Phil. Uh, Phil, we first met um, a while back and I was taken back by how open, honest and humble you were. And it wasn't a surprise that when we ran workshops with your teams, they were also able to communicate freely and openly. So Ian and I really wanted you as a guest. So the point of the podcast is to provide other CEOs with your hard-earned pearls of wisdom. So can we start by having you share your story of how you got started, which I think is inspirational in itself. Hi, Matt. Hi, gents. Um, well, I'm embarrassed by some of the, the introduction you've given me there for starters. So, um, yeah, no, I appreci appreciate your words there, Matt. I think um, I'd worked in the construction industry, I'll take you back to 2000 and to October 2002, uh, I was working for, I'd worked for the, in the construction industry for 15 years at that point and uh, deeply unsatisfied, worked for one of the big PLC merchants and I took an order from a, a company similar to how I function and I thought, why, why can't I do this? Um, and I went to the guy that I worked with, who was a really good salesman at the time, I said, look, I've just, just got this order from this customer this is how they function why don't we do this together and he went nah nah that ain't gonna work that's that's just that's just not that's just not something we could do he poo pooed it and i just knew then right ah uh, th this is something i've been thinking about something like this for a while this order really um that was it that was the defining moment that i'm gonna go and do this and i spent the next six months um really working out how I was going to do things. Uh, I talked to a supplier, hadn't talked to any customers at that point. I just knew this was something that felt right for me. I was 32. I had uh, a wife, two children, mortgage, a fair bit of credit card debt, um, and I just couldn't see any way out. until so 1st of April, and there was three, it was three people functioning how we function back then um that we're all doing the similar sort of thing and another trainer thought was well if those three can do it so can i so first of april i packed in my job started up um i had one supplier i had two customers i'd spoken to set the business up um and got and got rolling really and the main thrust was i knew a customer i knew a supplier um i could give that personal dedication and commitment to the customer and give them the service that I believe they weren't getting with the big PLC. I knew I could build a relationship with the suppliers. Um, and my, um, I think my first 12 months, my target was to do half a million pound um, in sales. I managed to double that. I managed to do just under a million pound my first year of sales um, and just continued growing from there. And I think um just i don't know whether i'd mentioned this to you matt is that, that within the first 18 months those three companies that i had based my aspirations around all ended up going into liquidation for various reasons i think they didn't look after their finances correctly they didn't they didn't run it as a i don't think it's a proper business they tried to grow too quick um and all three of them went into liquidation um and that was really again another telling thing for me that I've got to make sure I run this business right or I am going to get myself in trouble uh, and it could be done very quickly uh, and this is back in a time when the model I've got now or the model we've got was completely new you didn't have a website we didn't have the dropship model wasn't common um, it was a, it was a time where literally it was me and a mobile phone ringing a customer ringing a supplier um and and i'm trying to make the business work so yeah that's that's very broadly speaking how the whole thing started how many hours were you doing a day back then 
Um, well, um, I mean, firstly, we were operating out of our, our front room. I then went into a, a, into a managed a two man office, a one man office, then a two man office. And I would imagine it's all probably a blur. Um, my son would have been eight, eight ish. My daughter would have been two or three. Um, Pam would have been, uh, she was doing a full time job as well. She's an accountant. So I, it was pretty non-stop. It was pretty full on. Um, you know, at that start, you're really just learning how how things function. I'd only ever been a salesman, so I'd only ever buy, bought, and sold. I'm now taking on the financial function. Um, so yeah, I, I would imagine you know, 16, 17 hour days weren't uncommon. Um, as as I really got the thing got the thing up and running and got the thing starting to roll and really got to understand what it all meant um weekends i think it it was 24 at the end of the day it was 24 7 when you're running your own business you might be physically at a desk doing stuff but when you go home on a night time and you've shut the door it's still going on in your head it's still right well what how am i going to deal with that what does that mean financially? What does that mean for that customer? Has that order gone right? How am I going to get the next order? You're juggling all those sort of things. Um, and I don't think I don't think as a business owner that that ever stops. You know yourself, Matt. It's you, you, you're driven by a sense of we well, might be moving on slightly here, but you're driven by a sense of uh, wanting to achieve. What 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 is your drivers for making yourself? push yourself what if your drivers for making you want to go and do this is it your family is it your, is it your kids is it is it just a desire to improve is it just a desire to get out of the financial position you're in all these sort of things mean that when you're sitting down there on a night time with a cup of tea in your hand mindlessly watching a bit of tv you're not really watching that tv you're trying to think right well how how is this going to function how is this thing problem going to get solved in the next week month or year um, so yeah, it's pretty pretty much twenty four seven. I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, Phil, question from me: um, Can you tell me what's what's the best bit of advice you were given? Um, don't do it. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> what the hell Love are you it. doing? <laughs> yeah, and, and and you know, I've got my I, I bumped into a. Um, um a mentor of mine i had a meeting with him works for one of my suppliers uh and he's someone that uh, that was my first ceo of my company i first worked at was 17 or 18 uh and he's someone that i've viewed all the all the years along and he's just died recently and i sat down with a meeting about two years later and he said yeah when you first set up i thought what the hell is he doing uh this is never going to work um and that was a bit that that took me a bit a bit aback at the time um but he meant it from the right the right intention so best bit of advice i think is you know get everybody's opinion um really listen to what people are saying to you um and you've got to make you think you've got to take that advice in you've got to take everybody's opinion in um but at the end of the day just because you give me a bit of advice, just because you tell me my cup of tea is better with two sugars in, I can listen to that opinion, but it doesn't mean that that a tea with two sugars fits for me. Um, I've got to take that. I've, I've got to take that opinion in, see how it adapts to me, my business, my life, and if it doesn't, if the gut instinct is it doesn't make sense, then it doesn't make sense. Um, then then don't do it. That that's one of my sort of tenants, and that's not bit of advice I've been given so I'm trying to think a bit of advice I've been given I think it probably it probably comes from someone like a a Tony Robbins I spent a lot of time self-coaching and um bits of advice that he would he would specifically say on certain on, on uh, you know I started listening to that sort of stuff I think 2003 in the summer of 2003, I first discovered him and his DVDs and his CD, CDs at the time. Um, and one of his bits of advice that always stuck in my mind was stand guard at the door of your mind. And that just relates to what I've just said there. Just be careful what you're listening to, what you're taking in, what you're deciding to take in. Um, and listen to that stuff that you're given 
and try and evaluate it before you decide to action on it. So that that is definitely something I've um, I've tried to take into account. I think another book I would have read, and I've got a feeling it was um, Richard Branson said it that it, you know always hire. Oh no, I think it might be Steve Jobs actually. Always hire people that are better at the jobs than you could ever be. Um, and that's something I've listened to, and. I've definitely tried to take heed to that. I feel dismally on certain occasions, but it's something now that's more apparent than ever is that that you know I am never going to be good at certain jobs, and I never should think I can be. Always hire people that that are good at doing that job and can really really hone in and focus in on that, and allow them to get on and flourish it, um, flourish with that role. So that's definitely something that in uh, as you know Matt, Matt you and I had that discussion in the past 12 months I've really tried to adhere to wholeheartedly because I've definitely had a um a, a time where I've taken taken people on and decisions and I've interfered and it definitely doesn't work you if you're going to grow and you're going to develop into a business that can be big or bigger than where it is now you definitely need to let people control things that are that you're definitely not good at because you cannot be good at everything yeah i think we've all been touched by a bit of tony, tony robbins advice actually um a, a recent one that really captured my attention was um he said that one of the gifts that we're all given as humans is the ability to take a sort of negative mindset and just in an instant decide to be more positive and to be um, in a better mind state, and I think that is a, that is a gift. We can be glass half empty or half full, and yeah. I think that's that's true as well. Yeah, I mean, I've got as I could show you here. I've got I've got a lot of you know, pull the camera over here, and you can see. I mean, I've got stuff here. You know, all of these are identify your problems with your power, your energy, and solutions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people who feel to focus on what they they'll have to go through. People who succeed focus on what they will feel like in the end. You know, I've got all these. I've got all these things on the walls that remind me, because it's very easy, certainly for me, very easy for me to get lost in why I'm doing something. Uh, and I try it every single day, right, just start again. It's a new day. What's the baseline? What's the focus? Where am I going? Um, and definitely a lot of that is, is the Robin's mindset. Um, and I've had them on loop for a number of years. If I've been out in the car, I did the Unleash the Power Within. Oh, last year what was it july august last year so that was i did my first one of those in 2005 i did it again last year and it's just what was surprising to me was which shouldn't really be is, there's not a lot of difference between last year and 2005 this the things that we should be doing are all the same they've never ever changed but we just get lost in this shiny new, new thing that appears over here oh let's go off and do that no it generally all comes back to the same things it's the self-talk it's the focus it's the physiology it's what's your compelling future uh it's what's your identity as an individual and how is that molded that is what takes you or it's taken me to to do what i'm doing and where i'm going on my journey now and and that is all of that for me is is born out of tony robbins brilliant for sure thank you phil yeah i, lo I love that that kind of idea of I think Amazon called it raising raising the bar, and I think it's a real difference between a confident person and an unconfident person. It takes confidence to hire someone you think is better than you at something, um, and I think a lot of people talk about doing that doesn't doesn't always happen. I think it's crazy. You see, you see that that's a funny uh, opinion on Ian. Is it, again, it's how how two people with the same kind of, same idea can look at it in completely different di different mentalities. For me, it's just it's just obvious. Um, and when he said it, I was like, and, and you know, you, you see, I'm obviously you'll have met people where that is the case of certain people where people are going to feel threat, even though they're owner of the business, they're going to feel threatened about that. Yeah. But someone coming in, uh, to me, it's just like it's just a no brainer that you've got to do that. Um, and certainly now, where I'm at is if I hadn't made those decisions, I would be up, I'll be up the paddle with, with you know, I'll be up the stream without a paddle, um, because. Yeah. It's just these some of these basic and simple things are so obvious and so simple. Um, 
It's just why wouldn't you do them? Um, and and I, I say that from the other side of saying those words. And like Matt, you and I have had that discussion. I've said those words and done those things, and then I've also gone and done completely opposite because um, oh no, I can do it better. I can do it. So I've definitely been through the cycle of of logically these things make sense but emotionally mm, do i really want to do that do i really want to spend that extra bit on doing that when i know i can spend four or five hours doing it myself now past 12 or 18 months absolutely not i've got to invest i've got to take the plunge um and i won't allow my team i've specifically said to my team do not let me get involved with this particular thing over here you know you're better than that of me I can look at it, I can give my opinion, but do not let me get involved because when I do, I don't have to deal with the day to day, which is where where the business is really run now. Yeah. Right. That, that, that's nice. That leads us a bit into the next question. So in my coaching, I talk a lot about running experiments and many of which result in failure. Um, but what's the, what's the biggest business mistake you've made? Um probably everything i've just said not realizing sooner that um there are people that i've hired that i know better than me at their roles that i know uh, are far greater knowledge on what they do than me and i still interfered um so a prime example would be uh, and I've, I've interfered from an emotional mindset as opposed mm -hmm. to a, a actual a strategic and the logic says this, but my emotions have done this. And that's driven me primarily because I'm a salesman, uh, first and foremost. So the prime example that will be my, who I give credit to. Um, and we, we joke about with my team now that we had a customer that i i 2019 i met we we're up to a certain level of credit with him uh he just happened to come from a similar part of the country as me uh i arranged to go meet him got on with him well um and oh yeah there's a few little things in there that i oh no no he's going to be all right I left that meeting uh agreed a certain credit limit on the car on the way back, he rang me up and said, look, I need to place another order, da, da, da. That took him over the agreed credit limit, took the order. That was about, I don't know, August time, September time. Uh, so no, it would have been August time. And we were due to get a payment. Middle of September, I'm on holiday and I'm in a swimming pool. I get a call from him and said, I feel I've got a problem. Um, and I never got a penny of that money from him. So it was an emotionally driven decision. I got on well with him. The facts, looking back now, the facts were, I'm not going to read the facts up, but there were probably five things that looking back now, that was a red flag, 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 but I still made the emotional decision. And I don't allow myself to do that anymore. So my, that, that, that's definitely been my biggest my biggest mistakes I've made is where I've made an emotional decision and I look back on it from the eyes of just complete clarity, complete um, objective nature. And it's right, yeah, well, the writing was on the wall there, really, Phil, wasn't it? Um, so hence that particular environment, I very rarely get involved now in making those decisions. I want to know the facts. I want to know the facts on it. We go through the facts. I talk with my team right where do we where do we think this is going to go right on off we go so it's a far more balanced opinion on it that's brilliant so, um phil we've just completed a study of what the sort of big ceo challenges of 2024 are um and published that recently and with that uh, context in mind what do you see as your biggest challenges in the next few years um well the one one is the reason that we're with you, Matt, is that is getting the strategy right. Um, I think as I've got a um, I've got a vision um, of where I want to be. Um, my compelling future, going back to two thousand and five, Tony Robbins, right? What's your compelling future? So I've got a compelling future of where I want to be. Um, 
and that has just totally focused and driven me from day one. I want to do this. Um, now, my challenge has been that I've driven the business and, I, and some of the discussions we just had, um, I've driven it, made decisions, and I leave this wake, like a bit like a speedboat, I leave this wake in my in my rear that people have to mop up. So my, my challenge is to let that strategy work out and play out. It's going to take time. It's going to take patience. It's going to take decision from my team members and involvement from me to, to to make that physically function on a day-to-day basis, which I'm I'm something I, I can't be involved in because I'm not good at that. So that's definitely a challenge for me. Um, I think, secondly, from a business point of view, the marketplace is changing. Um, there's a lot more people coming into the market, like how we, how we operate and function. They can be very, very nimble. Um, they are how I was 15, 20 years ago. So it's, it's still all shiny and new when you've got this desire in your belly. Um, it's, you, can, you can do everything uh, and you can go and get a Shopify account or whatever it may be. You, you can kick off your business very quickly and you can be, you can be producing stuff very, very quickly. So we've got competition coming like that, that, that that's coming in. Um, so we've got to be very aware of how they're functioning, um, but also not losing sight that we are a different business. We're a different part of our our uh, our journey as a business. Um, and then it's, I suppose, it, it, it's right. We've got the strategy in place. Being nimble enough to look at the strategy does it make sense? How are we going to? How are we going to expand our business so that we're not getting caught up by these 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 new competitors coming forward? Um, how is that going to function three to five years down the line? What 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 things do we need to be doing now and planning now that we don't even know about that gives us the ability to adapt very very quickly uh, when these when these things appear in our business? Um, so we're in the process of looking at a, a new website at the moment and how that's going to link together with our systems and the best will in the world. Dig- that pretty moves on the third point is those digital systems that we've all got. We've got a, we've got a, a CRM system, we've got a website system, we've got an ERP system. How they all work together and are going to function, we haven't got a we haven't got a clue. I mean, we we the, the, these systems are so big that. We need to have a digital partners working with us that have gone and done that. And we've tried to do it bit by bit. And it's caused us nothing but aggravation. We're looking to work with a partner that's going to bring that together and then then get that fully functioning right. And then that brings us probably on the fourth bit of right, we've got all this, we've got this system that's working. We've got this huge amount of data. What do we do with that? We, we, you know, what does this, what does this data mean? Um, because having having someone to understand this little bit of data over here could add 0.1 of a percent under our margin. It could assist our growth by uh, that could be a one percent of what we're looking for next year. It could be just this little bit of data and how we how we've managed to look at it. But if we don't have someone going to look at that bit of data and say, right, have you looked at this detail here? This, 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 and this means this. So if we tweak these things here, we can get this. Um, it needs someone to actually physically understand what all that means, tell us it, and then we've got to put it into action. So um, those are probably just off the cuff what I think the challenges we've got. And me personally, it's right, how do I continue to keep my nose out of things that I'm not I'm not good at um, to allow the business to flourish to ha- allow um, allow the, I suppose the, the, the another one is the culture you know the business is growing we've got probably 70 or 80 employees now if that grows up to so that's been that's been challenging enough to keep the culture uh, right because the culture is not something that's just static um, like um you know it's not just a static thing it's something that evolves day to day you get people develop their personalities people get promoted people people get confidence so the culture completely 
is moving all the time like a, like an organism so how do we manage to try and allow that to grow and develop and the same time keeping with the business values and keeping keeping that i don't want to say control over it because i don't think you you do control it but you definitely keep an eye to ensure that that culture grows in line with the values of the business and in um and and in the direction you want it to so yeah the, the culture is definitely a, a part where if you haven't got that right and you haven't got the right team and the right ethos within that within that whole thing then the growth is just very difficult uh, i think um I, I don't think we do it brilliantly uh, i think we do better than most but it's something I'm, I'm conscious that we need to keep our eye on i would congratulate you on many aspects of your culture from what i've seen actually i think the having spent many days with with the gang there um they display traits of a of of a very high performing team mm. that um you should be very proud of yeah. and i think that's that, i appreciate the comment matt thank you and, and i think it's difficult because i'm not you see it you know that the, the value of what you bring to us and we were having a discussion leadership meeting yesterday and, 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 and we said this here then the value of what you bring to us is that you've got you've got this across many businesses so you're wandering into a lot of businesses and you can see the differences in how those cultures function whereas i'm just sat in looking at mine uh and it's very easy to say well why isn't this working why isn't that working and you think you lose sight of the fact that you've got all these other things that are working um that you just take for granted um so yeah no i, I appreciate i do appreciate that comment <laughs> Yeah, I absolutely echo what Matt said there. I think you know what was evident from the, the time we spent is that it's a really empowered team. Um, you define the goals that will take the company to the next level. And there's a kind of modern term that's banded around a lot. There's this thing called psychological safety, which I think that team really has, and it was it was great to see. So kind of with this empowerment in mind, how do you prioritize and delegate tasks effectively in your role? The um probably if i'm honest not very well um i'm i'm i'm, I'm just as I, think, as I said i'm being driven um and the the business the business has been i'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, at the end of the day i'm a trader right but I, and i say this to people regularly i'm a trader I, what what has given me the drive and the buzz the little the little kick is i buy from me i sell to be get on the next one buy from me sell to be get on the next one. i've just continued that cycle around that's why the business has has, has grown um and that that has been i've tried to pass that down down to the team so um i think the the, the delegating's always been and, and if some of the team are listening they'll, 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 they'll listen to this will probably probably balk at it but i think i'm good at delegate i think i'm good at passing stuff down um where i and i'm better now than i ever have been where i accept i'm not good at something or i don't enjoy doing it right who can that be given to and so that 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 i think for me has been reasonably reasonably easy um what i've done badly in the past is here i've gone back and i've filled with it after i've delegated so i'm, I'm working hard at trying not to try not to do that so that's the work in progress I think the prioritization is definitely something I need to work harder on. And I think bringing in you guys and having this strategy that's documented and the system that it works really is going to take out the fact that I need to get involved and have those, have, I, I even need to think about it. It should be all in place for the team to actually um, do, do that. Uh, and understand what needs to be done. So me now stepping back in terms of my priorities are, um, I think really getting getting used to how this business is gonna function with a leadership team in place. And my priorities are now are working out, right, where, where do I fit in? Um, <laughs> and that's, that, that is proving I'm probably on where am I? I'm probably six months into that journey now. And that is, yeah, that's proving 
proving challenge. The priority is my is priority is for me to work out what my priorities are and where I fit in, and that is proving that is with one hundred percent is proving challenging. Um, but that's the nature of the role I've got and and the success that I'm looking to further develop for myself and the business. So um, I hope that's not probably not a straight answer for you. It has to be again in a year. No, I think um, we'll, we'll check back in a year for sure. Yeah, but it, 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 it's <laughs> and again, it's it's just something from you know my my and again, you probably see it, Matt. You know, meet people like myself. There's different. They're in different stages of their life, or different stages of their journey, or just different mentalities, or different strengths. Um, it, it's it's working, and I, you know, I'm not I'm not frightened. I'd say that that I was you know I was diagnosed with inattentive ADHD about. Uh, three months ago, um, and when I got that, I was like, for a day, I was like, oh my god, what does this mean? And then the next day, I sort of started to sink in, and it made sense to, you know, I'll give you that model a minute ago about buying and selling. The hyper focus on that buying and selling was like, well, that's why I was good at that, or that's why I enjoy that because it, it's given me that quick rush. Whereas something that's more long term and and um, planning out. I just don't enjoy that. And I've been battling against with that for so many years. That I've, as a CEO, I've got to enjoy that. I've got to do that. I've got to. Um, so the, the diagnosis sort of gave me a right, right. Well, I don't. That makes it lets me off the hook of why I don't enjoy that. It lets me off the hook of of why I haven't enjoyed it. Right. Leave that to the team. Right. The bits I enjoy, how am I going to do that? So if I'm honest about my priority journey is really probably two or three months down the line so I'm, I'm i'm still really focused in now on right that is that is what i'm good at that is what it means that is how it needs to work right where is that going to fit in to work with the team to continue the journey i think with um with with adhd i think obviously your level of self-awareness has gone up now and you kind of know what mm -hmm. you why you've got to where you've got to and what your kind of superpowers were but also you know you've you've identified that you need that dopamine hit that rush to in order to sort of satisfy you as a as a business leader and you're you're able to sort of now manage that workload and those tasks that actually play to those um the way your sort of neurological wiring is which yeah. I think that level of self-awareness is, is super powerful whether you have um ADHD or any form of um, neurological sort of wiring that, that kind of drives you. And I think, um, yeah, I think it's one of the benefits of getting older and wiser, isn't it? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and you, you, end up, you end up talking about, you know, certainly in the past year, I've been a lot more open about who I am and how I function. Uh, and that's probably brought together the team tighter. Um, and that again, just by talking about it, there's always someone got a story. Say, oh well, yeah, I know someone that does that, uh, or I know someone that functions like that, or I do that. And all oh, right, then we can really connect with people. Um, I've got someone that, that works for me now, and we've really connected and had the conversation on that. And yeah, well, that's why we get on because we can. We're we're both running at 100 miles an hour, and we've been discussing stuff on the digital side. It's like, yeah, well. And and we're about to say, well, we can't. You and I actually can't discuss things because we all get excited about it because we're getting that little rush from it, and we know we're going to leave it. We're going to leave this. We're going to go and do something about it because that's what we have done, and we've left this wake in our past, you know, it, behind us where it's like, now, hang on, now we know we both know that. Then it actually we know we can't have the conversation on certain things because it's gonna it's gonna cause an it's gonna cause a problem. So that knowing that is again it's just deepened that, that that connection and that relationship we've got to be able to talk about things so again it helps how the whole thing functions i heard a great phrase recently that chaos finds chaos yeah that is a good one yeah definitely <laughs> that is definitely a good one yeah okay so last one for me phil um i don't know the stats on ceo burnout but it feels like it's increasing or perhaps we're just more open about it now what steps do you take to ensure you look after your mental and physical health and that you don't burn out i, I think everything we talked about um i think um uh, right well certainly 
physical. I've got a I've got a gym at my house, so I've definitely really the past twelve months really focused in on my my physical health. So from in, in terms of working out what I'm eating, uh, I made it to come, uh, a decision uh, twelve months ago. Cut out chocolate, sweets, alcohol, uh, crisps, all the all the all the bad stuff I was eating and some people go well you're crazy you've got no, you got no pleasure in life I'm like well it wasn't making me happy to eat and consume all of that so I sort of my diet out um I lost about probably 12 kilos so physically I feel I feel better um I try to I try to meditate regularly um and I, I do I do struggle with that a bit um i do I, I try to do a lot of yoga um so um i've got a, a yoga class i've been trying to go to twice a week again that's probably been reasonably difficult but i generally feel better with when, I, when i'm doing when i'm doing those things like, as i said i've got pictures all around my house of um uh, of friends and family um you know things that remind me of why i'm why i'm doing this because again with my i think with my diagnosis I tend to get, I tend to drift off, um, and it's very easy to go to some of the things I shouldn't be thinking about. So those reminders around the house uh, assist me cutting out stuff as well. You know, don't watch the news uh, every single day. Uh, don't listen to the podcast every single day because I've got a tendency to listen to something and all right great i've got to go off and do that so i'll go and buy this and right okay i've got this new this new thing i can do and of course i end up over over having so many things i'm trying to do that none of it ever gets done so cutting a lot of the lot of the noise out that just is just waffle in the background that takes me away from actually what is gonna what is gonna drive me on is my or what's gonna give me that that mental health is the inner self it's not it's not i'm not i'm not a material person so i don't have all the watches and the cars that that, that maybe the, the the shiny objects that people want the inner the inner self is the what's going to bring the peace and the calm and the and the growth and the satisfaction out of growing the business or or, or, or have been physically in a good in a good spot um it it, it's really inside that matters, um, and again, it goes back to stand guard at the door of your mind. It's what what I'm what I'm letting in. So, uh, just a number of things. I think it really all comes back to definitely just just my inner self, being comfortable with who I am, accepting who I am, um, accepting that I'm not perfect, accepting that I've got a sign on my wall here that says I am enough. I have always been enough. I always I will always be enough, um, and that. You know, I've just sparked a bit of emotion in me that it's like, yeah, um, I don't have to prove anything to anybody. I've just got to, I've just got to be comfortable in myself. Um, and what, do, right? What do I want? Do I want to grow my business? Do I want to have a great team of people? Do I want to, do I want to push myself forward? Well, great, I do. Right, I want to do it in organised. I want to do it in a, a sensible and planned fashion, something that's healthy for me. Um, because if I you mentioned the word burnout i definitely if i look back now probably three or four years ago oh yeah i was definitely in a head place where my head was frazzled i was running at such a pace that it just it just wasn't right um and a year ago i, I took a month out went on to a retreat in portugal and i came out of that i was like right okay this is this is this is how i should feel uh and then the journey really continued from there so i'd, I'd, I'd definitely recommend if anybody is feeling overwhelmed or at a point where yeah this this just doesn't feel good anymore is try to take some try to take some time out and really um away from everything if you can you know seek um I had eight therapy sessions on this on this retreat, and we talked a lot about my relationship with work uh, and how that how that functioned. Um, and that was just that was just a great insight to really understanding what made me tick um, and my relationship with work. Um, and off back of coming out of that was like not being frightened to talk about it. Um, and not really and, and really share that around with people so 
it, that that is definitely something I've done that really really benefited my mental my mental health. Um, so th 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 those are things I've certainly done and realised in the past in the past twelve months specifically. So I think the people listening to this will probably have clocked that I think your superpowers are this com magic combination of mm -hmm. intelligence, self awareness, and the ability to empower others and inspire others. And um, I think everyone's going to learn a lot from listening to you today, Phil. So thank you so much for joining with joining the podcast. No problem. I think just one last last thing as well is this: yeah, don't lose lose sight of things like your friends and family around you as well. I, I think there's definitely a tendency with CEOs to it, it all becomes about the business, um, and it certainly was that case for me. And that realization in the past twelve months, well, actually, yeah, what have I missed? in those years of building the business that that really i need to cut i need to recognize now and i need to catch up on now um and and really those 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 personal connections with with friends family um and and even and, and even people within the team actually making it it's not all just about work when you're sitting down and chatting to them it, they, they are they are people and they've got families and they've got concerns themselves just trying to trying to also connect on that level um um and again it's just another just slightly off the wall here is that you you know you've got you've got you've got your role as a ceo you've got your role as a father you've got a role as a uh, as a as a as a boss you've got a role as a as a partner uh, as a husband or whatever it may be is is being able to switch between those roles as well and i definitely found it difficult to switch come out of ceo role into father role or husband role or friend role definitely that is something i'm just beginning to get my head around and get the grips with now as well and i'll be interested to see if of other people certainly i have spoken to people in the past where that is definitely definitely a challenge for people as well yeah i've struggled with that myself over the years mm. i think um again it comes back to self-awareness and what you then do to take measures to, to kind of resolve that or improve that <clears throat> And it, it shines through in your business, Phil. I mean, that when we talked about you know, that empowered, psychologically safe team, it's because that side of you shines through in the business as well. Cool. Thanks, Ian. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, you're a legend. Okay. Well, soon to you. Um, I appreciate you coming in, Matt, and doing everything you're doing, and hopefully, uh, long, long with me, our, our relationship continue. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks, Phil. Uh,